The damage left by Hurricane Harvey is still being fully realized. In Houston alone, 200 to 300,000 homes are in need of repairs. Inspecting those homes for insurance claims using traditional methods can be time consuming, of course, costly and dangerous. As a result, many insurance companies are now turning to drone technology to assess damages. Joining us right now, George Matthew. He's chairman and chief executive officer of Kespri, that is a drone company based in California. And George, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. So glad to be here. Thank we you. We know much. the top insurers, State Farm, Allstate, are employing drones in in the wake of Harvey. Tell us what you're seeing. Yeah, so we're actually working with several of those top PNC carriers as well as independent adjusters down in Houston and the greater sort of Corpus Christi area. It turns out that drones are actually very effective for being able to assess the level of damage, particularly when it comes to wind and other weather-related damage. Damage in the area and the process of being able to get a claim effectively adjudicated can be done quickly because literally the farmer's CEO came on air just about a week ago and said that a drone flying over a house can actually help an adjuster cover as much as three claims per hour versus three claims per day. How, is, how, is that, how does that work with the drone collecting all of the Yeah, data? so it's very straightforward in the sense that literally the adjusters themselves can fly a Caspri drone in a fully autonomous way and the drone is now taking the measurement of the house, the level of damage and then fully integrating to their claims processing system so that instead of manually climbing on top of that roof to get the extent of the damage, you're actually now doing it within five minutes versus three or four hours that wow. a typical process would take. Oh, a couple amazing. questions for you. So, one, um, is there sufficient capacity of drones available right now to address what's happening in um, Houston and, and, and other parts of Texas, but also to meet the demand that's going to most likely come from uh, uh, the impact of a hurricane in South Florida? And then, two, can these drones actually operate indoors at all? Yeah. So, uh, regarding your question, the level and extent of the damage, which has, of course, occurred around Harvey, which is estimated at least on primary damages alone, could be as much as $30 billion. And now a new Category 4, Category 5 hurricane coming into Florida. There cannot it's a, be... It's a Cat 5 right now. Right now it is, right. And so to see that level of damage that would occur, there can't be enough technology that's being leveraged appropriately for these use cases. So in the case of the Caspery drone itself, we're not actually doing any indoor work per se, we're actually flying overhead of rooftops. What are you seeing, just really quick, just in general, what do these images look like that you're getting from we, the drones? We, so until last night, Cheryl, we had uh, TFRs, what's known as temporary flight restrictions that were in place, so mm -hmm. no one could actually fly regarding the recovery effort. It's been all focused on rescue. So the first Caspery drones actually flew as of yesterday on behalf of farmers and other PNC carriers down in the uh, the Houston area. So does it and so we're starting to see the first level and extent of the damage. Is it, is it worse it, than you thought? It's, it's as significant as probably is worse. Oh. Does it just take photos Please. and then upload them to the insurer's website or does it do videos? Yeah, it's actually places? beyond uh, the concept of photos. We're actually taking that imagery and fusing it with other sensor-based information to construct a three-dimensional model of the asset itself. So in this case, the house, the roof, has a fully realized three-dimensional model that then we're layering hail damage and other you know, wind damage related assessments on the 3D model. And you're saying that the drone really streamlines this assessment process. Yeah, think about the drone as the new sensor network, the ability to very naturally collect all forms of new information that can then be easily processed to, for instance, construct a three-dimensional model to adjudicate that claim faster and deliver a better customer experience to those policyholders. Is the government trying to work with you at all? We're not working with the government at this exact point. We've had a few initial conversations with the government about some areas that we can be helping, but right now we're really focused on our customers who are most of the PNC carriers as well as the independent adjusters. You would think that maybe increasingly your customer base includes local and state and, and, and federal governments. Yeah, for sure. Is that what you're expecting? No, I think that is an area that we have a great opportunity to expand our business yeah. into. We've been very focused on industrial work, right? We started in the mining aggregate space. We expanded into insurance. We do a lot of work with the construction workers around the country for construction projects around earthworks. And so, to your point, Maria, there's a very natural expansion for us to go into state and local government. All right. We'll be watching. George, thanks very much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. George, Appreciate it. George Matthew Kespri there. We'll take a